Okay, assuming a successful germination and emergence, you're going to have a seedling to care for. So I figured it'd be important to go uh, and discuss how to properly take care of that seedling. So ideally, four to nine or so days after soaking your seeds, you should start to see a break in the surface and emergence should occur. The first leaves you're going to see, these are leaves located right here and here, are called cotyledons, these or seed leaves. These are smooth and have smooth margins with no serrations. The leaves here and here, kind of in the east-west direction, are called true leaves in this case. These are the ones that look like the normal leaves, and the plant will continue to produce these. Cotyledons or seed leaves only show up initially after emergence, and then all the leaves after that will be called true leaves. So seedlings should be receiving light so they can start to produce their own sugars. You're looking at about 18 hours of light. But the key part is six hours of continual darkness daily. You do not need to use high output lights for this stage of growth. Seedlings actually prefer less intense light, kind of show here, kind of filtered light. This could be fluorescent lighting or dimmed higher output lights used for the first two to three weeks. If you do only have high intensity lights, they can be used. Just be sure to keep them a good distance away, typically at least three, four, even sometimes five feet away from the seedlings. Dim them if possible or put shade netting in between the light in your newly emerged seedlings. Fluorescence can be about 6 to 12 inches away for the same result. The anatomy of the seedling. So if we look over here, we have our cotyledons. These are our seed leaves, true leaves. And then below we'll have a tap root, which is the main central root that comes down. And off that we'll have these small little root hairs, which are very important for nutrient and water absorption. Caring for your new seedlings, I can't overstress this enough, do not over-fertilize. Typically seedlings do not need much fertilizer at all. Uh, and most growers will add too much nutrients or overly concentrated mixture and burn their own seedlings. Have growers at all the shelves of all the latest nutrients and they want to feed their seedlings right out of the get-go. Want to make sure it's very dilute, if at all. Seedlings, the key part is they should be um, receiving about 18 hours of continuous light and even moisture in a consistent environment. That's more important than trying to compensate with uh, nutrients, which oftentimes will likely burn a small tender seedling. You want to ask for um, pythium or damping off, which can often occur in seedling trays or early on, especially if overwatering occurs. The root zone temperature is cold, which is below 60 degrees Fahrenheit or 20 degrees Celsius, will also encourage this problem to occur. And using a seedling heating mat is advised to get above that temperature uh, to avoid or reduce the chance of pythium wiping out an entire tray of newly emerged seedlings. Keeping your seedling um, going. Well, fertilizing typically starts one to two weeks after the initial emergence. Over this initial week, diluted fertilizer can slowly be added, uh, but don't push the seedling along too much because you can burn them. Kelp and humic acids are good sources to start with as the odds of harm are minimal. The combination can be helpful to, benefit, to developing roots, especially growing in uh, soil-based uh, medias. Uh, irrigating your seedlings, the goal is consistent moisture. Too much or too little water can cause negative impacts on your seedlings. Avoid excessive water. Uh, place seedlings on a tray or grate to allow good drainage to occur. Monitor soil moisture, and remember that depending on what light source you use can also impact the amount of water. If using those high intensity lights, they may dry out a little bit quicker, and you want to keep those conditions as consistent as possible for those seedlings. What makes the process a little complicated is that water nature of the plant will change as it grows. You kind of want to hit that nice average middle. Uh, misting systems can be installed. The key part is to keep that environment as consistent for those newly emerged seedlings as possible. You may want to transplant seedlings, so when roots fill or reach the bottom of the container, it's time for transplanting. Typically, this is about three weeks to a month after initial seed soaking is marked by two or three sets of true leaves. Again, this depends on the size container that you're using. This is a very small plug. That's important to keep your seedlings under light to help prevent them from getting leggy. You don't want these to stretch out, getting leggy so they get really tall, make them flop over, and develop weak stems. The importance of these root hairs that I mentioned, they're very important. They're single-celled uh, root hairs, and they're the main site of nutrient and water absorption. While their importance of the plant is high, so is the likelihood of damage. They're only one cell thick. Very important we maintain as many of those as possible. In order to do that, we want to limit root disturbance throughout the entire plant's life cycle, with a high priority for growers, especially in the transplant or early on phase. Transplanting is when these um, roots can be very severely damaged or any sort of disturbance, especially when the plant is small. Light duration for our seedlings, we kind of see the change in night length or day length, depending on the seasonality of the year. Typically you want that 16 to 18 hours of light with that 8 to 6 hours of continual darkness. 
This will also help keep the cannabis plant in the vegetative state and not induce flowering. The type of light you use will determine on the proper distance from the ceiling for its maximum uh, benefit. <clears throat> Note plants can be illuminated with a green light so plants cannot perceive this, which will count as uh, areas of darkness. The key part here is to maximize the plant growth. Uh, we don't need to run necessary for 24 hours. Some growers will. Uh, but the key part is if you get under that 16 hours, the budding and flowering will be initiated even at the seedling stage. And you want to avoid that. You want to encourage root growth. So excessive water will literally suffocate roots and because they need to breathe and exchange oxygen and carbon dioxide. Excessive water can also increase the odds of root rots and soil pathogens, damping off pythium, phytophthora, and all sorts of negative issues. Using that heat mat will help elevate the soil temperature and improve root formation. But getting hotter than 90 degrees Fahrenheit will lead to reduced root growth. So again, you want a warm root zone, but not a hot root zone. As seedlings get older, uh, you want to establish adequate a root system above on the above ground portion will start to grow exponentially. It's important to transition plant from seedling to the vegetative stage. Often this requires repotting into larger containers to reduce pot bound roots, which will stunt plants. You want to avoid the situation where all you see is root. You can see this plant started in the plug, went to a larger pot, and now is in an even larger pot here. And that sequence of steps allows it to grow out and fill those containers and allows uh, for efficient packing of plants in a small area. Lastly, some people think, well, why bother going through the transplanting of all these different plants? Why not just start in a 10-gallon pot? Uh, that has many negative effects because 10-gallon pots take up a lot of space, especially when you're talking about a very small seedling. Roots may not be contained, so they'll not be forced more top growth. The roots just kind of spread out. Uh, they're heavy to move. They require a lot of uh, media or soil. They don't allow for root inspections during the transplant process. and can waste media if not properly sexed, meaning if you're growing a lot of male plants. So that's why going through this process of transplanting is not necessarily a bad thing, and it's transitioning your newly emerged seedling to getting ready for the vegetative stage.